I am Rachel Humphrey on behalf of DEI Advisors. And anyone who knows my hospitality industry journey knows that it has been incredibly tied to our next guest hospitality journey. So it is um, a tremendous honor for me today to be sitting down and spending some time with Jagriti Panwala. Jagriti, welcome. Thank you so much, Rachel. And I really, really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Um, I feel like this is going to be a more conversational because we've worked together for many years and we know each other, not just professionally, but also personally. So I really appreciate uh, you allowing me to be here. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Absolutely. So some of the people watching will have heard something about your journey to leadership, but many have not. Um, from being born in India to a few years ago being the first chairwoman of the world's largest hotel owners association to being the youngest inductee ever into the Signature uh, Broker Deal or Hall of Fame. Tell us a little bit about your path, your journey and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Rachel, for people who have not heard my story, I uh, started my journey very young age. I came to this country with my parents, my brothers and sisters when I was 15 years old. And when I came here, I didn't know anything. I could barely speak English uh, when I came to this country. Uh, went to college here. I was fortunate um, able to get in a college here. And I graduated with uh, honors in economics and finance. Uh, right out of college, um, I really needed to do something. I just needed to make some money. So I was recruited uh, by an insurance company uh, in 1998 at a job fair. And, um, uh, you know, when I started in the first year, it was very difficult because it is a, a male dominated industry. The financial service industry was years ago in many ways. And, um, um, you know, I started uh, I started by just really working really hard and, and having this work at hard work ethic, which was instilled in me by my parents for for many, many years. Um, I'm actually an accidental hotelier because during one of my first meetings, when I was meeting with the prospect regarding the financial planning, he told me that um, he's having a really hard time at his hotel and he's not making any money. Um, I knew the market. I knew a little bit of hospitality because my extended family was in the business, but I saw an opportunity. And that's how I actually became hotelier by purchasing my first property from my uh, uh, from a prospect at that time. And then eventually he became my client. I feel like both of the journey um, kind of worked hand in hand for me uh, because uh, a lot of my uh, clients are hotel owners and they are Asian American hotel owners and um, and obviously physicians and, and small business owners. But, you know, I started both journeys at the same time. Um, I became very involved in uh, Ahawa uh, very early on in my uh, in my career. And um, um, in 2014, I decided to uh, run for an uh, Ahawa chair position and I became Ahawa's uh, uh, youngest uh, not the youngest, sorry, the first female chair in uh, 2019. At the same time, um, I was thriving in the, my financial service uh, industry and ag again with many obstacles that we'll be discussing um, here shortly. But I became the youngest inductee as a Hall of Fame. And what that means is that out of maybe 10,000 advisors, oh, it takes them 10 plus years to achieve the goal in the industry. I was able to do it at... Um, um, I believe I was 32 years old when I was able to accomplish that. So um, it was an honor. Um, I love both of this industry. And I think that's why I feel uh, really good about what I do, because when you have the passion and when you love what you do, um, I feel you you just really um, accelerate in it. So, again, it's uh, it's been a it's been a tough journey. It's a lot of hard work. But I, I feel that I found uh, the passion uh, in the workplace uh, that I've always wanted to. Well, that, I mean, like I said, not only tremendously unique, but one of the really special things about it is that you actually have two careers now, one in financial services and one in the hotel industry. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, people talk about work-life balance. We all know there's no such thing, but let's call it work-life management. You actually have kind of a work-work life management because you are balancing two careers and being a mom, a daughter, a, a spouse. Tell us a little bit about what strategies you use to make sure, if you think you are managing all of those um, at the highest level. I think uh, we're all managing not just one or two, but multiple careers, because even being a mom, 
being a daughter-in-law, being a great partner, I think that takes also a lot of work. Um, and, uh, and, and I feel that being a mom uh, itself is a full-time job. Uh, so I would say that, look, I don't think um, um, uh, my, my uh, duties are specific that I'm good or bad at it because I'm a man, because I'm a woman. I think it's a, it's a challenge for everybody. If you're a male and if you're juggling multiple things, it's still a challenge. And, and for women, it's it certainly is a challenge. I, I balance it uh, one day at a time. I think uh, having a really good support system at home, number one, is extremely important. And also having a good support system uh, at workplace is as important, creating a team around you that want you to become the champion, want you to be successful. But only way that that happens, if you create a team at home or work that everybody feels a part of the success. And, and I feel that that's something I've learned over the years. I don't think I was that good at it in the beginning. But once I started to see how important the support system is around you, I really uh, made sure that my team at work uh, feels as successful as I do because they're part of the success. And same thing at home. I, um, you know, I, I used to do a lot of uh, just like uh, lectures, right, uh, when the kids were young. But my son is 13 years old. My daughter is 17 years old. So now it's more about uh, leading by example. Like this is what mom is doing for a family. But this is mom also doing it to serve the community, to help people, help other people around you. And I think leading by example with your children um, at workplace, I think is extremely important. So can I, am I doing everything at 100 uh, percent? I am sure I'm not. But I give my best every single day in a very positive way and keeping everybody around me as uh, as positive as possible uh, throughout uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Well, I love that. And, you know, you and I have spent a lot of time talking about our kids and the impact both of our crazy schedules can have on them, but also the lessons we want them to take away from it. You just touched on that a little bit. Um, in addition to your children who can see you as a role model and as an inspiration, I've had the true privilege of traveling the country with you and seeing the people who come up to talk to you after you speak at an event or when you're present at an event and not just from the hotel community or not just from the Indian American community, not just people of a certain level or age, but really um, just a, a tremendous number of people. How does that feel for you or what, what is your takeaway when somebody comes up and tells you how inspired they feel by your journey and you sharing your story? Yeah, Rachel, you know, when you and I um, led AHOA, uh, when I was a chair and you were the interim CEO and president, um, it was a powerhouse. I think uh, it wasn't just me. I think people were coming up to both of us and 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 inspired. Um, I'll give you I'll give you a, a story because I know that um, uh, it's it's very much uh, uh, in that we're, we're, we think about that. Hey. Jagriti being and Rachel being in this leadership position inspires many women and many young leaders, which which is probably true. But I think coming from your male colleague, the compliment um, that that's a lot. That's really really important too, because in many times I've had fathers come up to me and have said, uh, and I know Rachel, you and I both experienced this together during our leadership role in Ahawa. Um, and even even right now, we experience that whenever we're going to industry events is um, is, you know, the 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 conversation is that, hey, my daughter, who never was passionate about the hospital industry, who doesn't really understand. And and I, you know, when she came to this event and show you, you know, saw you speak. Um, she was inspired and and she now wants to do more. She wants to get involved. She wants to join the the different organizations. She wants to be in the hospitality industry. And I think that's that's I mean, if we're helping just one person at a time, um, that's, that's just amazing. I mean, everything that you and I work so hard for, it's, it's all worth it when there is just a, somebody just says that you've helped my child come out of their shell because. We both have kids. I know how how struggle that is, especially inspiring your younger um, and your teenager daughters. So, anytime that we get that compliment, I, I I think we're we're moving in the right direction. 
Um, well, that's a great point. And, and that shows that you can serve as a champion and a mentor for others who have, you know, specifically or generally been your champions and mentors in your career, in your life that have really um, helped you develop, whether it's a confidence or a skill set or something else that has let you know that if you put your mind to something, you could be successful at it. Yeah, I would say I started with my father. Um, he's been my champion my entire life since I was little. I think the, and I've said this story on, uh, um, at different places that when I was just eight years old um, and being a female in India, it's, it's very different than maybe being a female here at, when you're eight years old. But my dad was getting me involved in the business aspect of it at a very young age uh, because he always said that whether you're men or women, that should never matter on what you want to do in life. Uh, personally or professionally, you should never hesitate to move forward. It doesn't matter how much struggles and obstacles you have. So that was instilled in me right from beginning. So I would say my father was has been my mentor. He's still my mentor. But over the years, it it has uh, um, it has become not just one or two people, but 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 many people. Um, I get inspiration from when I just go to the events and I'm speaking with you, Rachel. Or I'm speaking with. Mitch, or I'm speaking with Mehu, or I'm speaking with Chip, or I'm speaking with, you know, anybody. It's the, the inspiration is there on every single day. I think uh, uh, us to explore that and and um, and seek the opportunity and 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 make sure that you you you're just you know you're you're receiving that information. I think I think it's really really important. So. My husband has been my huge support. He's my best friend. He's uh, he's also my mentor. But I, I feel like the mentorship now it's it's you you have to keep reaching out and uh, and keep meeting people and and look for for mentorship from from everywhere. But I would say my dad has been my my champion, my pioneer, my entire life, and it can even now every morning him and I speak. Uh, when my mom was with us, she was my uh, my strength. And uh, her and I spoke uh, every single morning, even just for two minutes, just to see how how the day is. And now it's continued with my father. So I'm, I'm very blessed to have uh, an amazing support system and, and amazing people around me who, who inspire me every single day. Well, I love that, too, because it shows how critical that support is at home and to have champions at home and mentors at home, not just in the workspace. Um, you mentioned some of the tremendous industry leaders that are a part of your network. Um, you know, hospitality or the hospitality industry, to me, is really a relationship business. And we have seen firsthand how incredibly powerful having not just knowing people, but having true relationships really is. How have you built your network? And is there anything about um, maybe your character or your personality traits that allow you to network in a slightly different way? You might network differently than um, a colleague or a male counterpart or even a, a female might network differently. How do you um, continue to build those relationships and how do you network that suits your personality? I think um, if you if you speak with um, anybody who's uh, been in any industry for a very long time, whether it's a financial service industry or hospitality or literally any industry, I think the one advice that everybody will will give to somebody who's who's coming up in the in the industry um, is that building relationship is probably the most important thing that 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 you should do, and and it's important. Uh, to, to network. Um, and, and for me, I, um, I love meeting people. I, I love meeting uh, new people. I love uh, building relationship uh, because I, I, I also feel that in order to, um, and, and I don't want to say in order to achieve your goal, but I, I think it's, I think it's important to have, have connection uh, with people that if you need anything or if you're able to give back, um, you you have that. Uh, so I, I think going to the industry events, going to uh, 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 joining organizations, uh, being a part of the voice is is extremely important. So look, you you and I and many people can just go to the events and say hello, have a drinks, have appetizers and walk out. Right. But then what do you do after that? Right. What's the next step? I think understanding that what your goal is and um, and and 
and understanding how to reach that goal is, is extremely important. I join organizations because I have a passion for the industry. I join organizations because I think I can give back. I join organizations because I want to be a part of the voice. I want to be a part of a decision making. And I think we, we all have to find that 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 what what level of uh, a connection or building relationship that uh, that we want to achieve. Uh, but I, I, I truly believe that in order to um, to 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 build relationship and have a network, you have to be a part of a, a, a process also. And that's why I've been very fortunate that I've been part of AHOA. I've been part of HNLA. Um, I'm also uh, joining some of the boards uh, uh, when it comes to our financial service industry. And I think it's it's important for us to be um, have a seat on the table so you can be part of those decision-making process. And I think that's a great segue, you know, in talking about how active you've been with HLA, with AHOA, with state organizations, with women's initiatives and other things. Um, two parts. One, why is that so important for you to, to be a part of that community? But where do you look when you need guidance, when you need resources? Where are you looking to continue growing your skills or to find answers that you might not know? I, I think uh, the learning is a, is a really important part of our journey. Look, when I started in both industry at 22 years old, um, I, I really didn't know much and I really had to learn. But every single year, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm attending the webinars, I'm attending uh, uh, the seminars, I'm attending whenever there is an opportunity to learn. And I think educating yourself is, is really important. Being a, and as I just mentioned, being a part of a process, because look, every day um, I can wake up and you can wake up and say, we've got 10 things on the agenda and it's the same thing every single day. Um, and and I, I, we get, it's almost like a tunnel vision that everything just, uh, this is what my day is. I start six in the morning and I end at six o'clock at night or seven o'clock, whatever the time period is. And this is what I'm doing. I think it's important to be, um, uh, to, to actually be part of the process, join organizations. So when we're doing advocacy, and advocacy is in every single industry, not just the hospitality. When you become a part of the advocacy part, when you are helping people around you, uh, it, 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 it it almost fulfills me personally, but also it helps me per, per professionally uh, build more connection and build more relationship. Uh, so I'm I'm very um, uh, I was very I am very committed uh, uh, the organization that I'm I'm involved in, but but I think you 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 have to have a purpose behind it. That what is your passion? What is it that you want to give back? Because you'll always get you know get. 10 times full when you give back. And I think giving back is uh, uh, giving back, joining, whether it's a committee level, whether it's uh, it's becoming a board member, uh, but being a part of a decision-making process is important. And I, and, I, and I truly believe that I encourage everybody is that it doesn't matter which industry you're in, uh, make sure you, 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 you become involved and even also give back because giving back is also will, will gain back a lot uh, a lot tenfold more than what you're giving in. Giving yeah. in. You know, that is um, a common generalization that women do not do a good job advocating for ourselves and whether that is part of the challenge in seeing women continue to be elevated to the C-suite, getting the promotions that we are interested in or doing other things. Something in your um, psyche must have told you that how important it was to advocate for yourself because there was no female chair of AHOA at the time. So something in you said, you know what, I can do this. What would you tell people who are struggling either finding their voice or advocating for themselves or thinking that they can do something that really gave you the, the courage, which it's an incredibly courageous move to make, or the um, the know-how, the the intelligence to be able to go and advocate for yourself to get something that you really wanted. Yeah, so you know, I'll give you an example on on uh, on both industries. When I started um, in the financial service industry, and in my first year, um, I was the only female in the entire room as an advisor. And I still remember uh, during my I think it was a second meeting, uh, our managing partner, who's supposed to be your mentor, actually pointed out to me and said that. Either you're going to fail out of business in the next six months or you'll be working for somebody as a secretary. 
And I don't think, uh, I, I, looking back, of course, at that point, I was shocked that he would say that to me. But looking back, uh, I'm not, I, I, I don't think it was a personal attack, but I think it was more about the reality, right, that many female who came in the financial industry, uh, because it is a male-dominated industry, and it is because it's a lot of work involved, I think there was a lot of per uh, perception, a wrong perception, uh, that um, as a female, you couldn't do it. Uh, in my first year, I was... Um, um, I qualified as a lifetime cabinet member. It's, it's a little bit more in detail, but when I qualified that, actually a lot of people, a uh, lot of other advisors said, hey, she just got lucky. And then over the years, after I did a second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, so on and on, once I became the, the youngest inductee, honestly, it took them that long for them to be convinced that I was actually really good at what I was doing. Um, and even now, when I go to some of these industry conferences, when I'm traveling with my husband, uh, some people who do not know who I am, they'll congratulate him because it's just an assumption. So that's that's always been there. Uh, when it came to AHOA in 2011, when I joined AHOA, I was actually quite surprised uh, when I was attending the events that the female participation just wasn't there. Um, and I just had a really hard time understanding why that was. But once we had our team together uh, with a lot of other female leaders who came together and said, we need to make a, a drastic changes. So we started doing a lot of events and a lot of the educations that were important for the women to be successful personally and professionally. Um, and then in 2014, and I was in Ahawa for a few years, and I really, one of my main reason for for running for an AHO officer position wasn't just because I wanted diversity, it's because I was really passionate about the advocacy part. And how I was, uh, uh, along with the HNLA, were a huge pioneer, and I really wanted to be a part of that process. And that's really the reason um, uh, I decided to become, or I said to run for the position. Uh, but I think um, also the diversity was, was as equal important because when you are looking at an association, if you, I, I believe in the in a in a decision making process. You need to have different perspectives and different backgrounds. And and if in the fact that Ahua never had a female chair in almost twenty seven years, twenty eight years at that time, I think that just wasn't right. Something wasn't right about that. So I wanted to be a part of the process, and I um, I ran for election. I actually ran against uh, two of my really good friends who are who are as qualified candidates, but. It was, it's, you know, I was chosen as a, as a first female of a whole. And I'm some, this is something that I took it as a, as a very um, uh, high responsibility um, because I knew what, what, how much it would take to, to be in that position. But I'm, I'm glad that I had an opportunity. It's something that I will always cherish. And, and more than important, I cherish that I, I did it with you, Rachel. It was, a, <laughs> it was an, a, a, an unbelievable year for uh, uh, not just for a hope, but also for the for the industry. Absolutely. And, you know, I feel the same way. You know, I, while I have spent a lot of time with you, I know that um, you don't want to be known specifically for being female in that role um, because you were deserving and you were elected by your peers for it. What how much responsibility, though, did you feel? I mean, the eyes of an industry were certainly on you, the eyes of an, a 20,000 member association. How much pressure or responsibility did you feel knowing that while you were incredibly qualified and you would be a great leader, that you were the first and people would be looking to you to see um, a, a female in leadership in that capacity? You know, I, I, I knew... Um, I knew that the responsibility and the pressure was there, but I really did my best and I tried as much as possible to kind of black out all the all the noise around me and just focus on the agenda for the association because that's that's why members chose me not not just for the picture up or not just for you know um, um, uh, any any type of political stuff, but it's, it's, it was for let's make sure we're doing the right things for the membership, we're doing the right thing for the industry, we're doing the right thing for the association. And that's what I focused on. Uh, the pressure was there. I mean, there were many people who doubted when I was running and was doubting me when I was the chair of the association, but I had to keep all that away from me. And, and again, creating a right team. And I was very fortunate to have an unbelievable team with me at Ahawa also at home and also also at work. Um, and that kind of helped me 
kind of stay focused. But but I honestly like if I if if I worried about the pressure every single day, I don't think I could have done my job. And I just kind of kept everything behind me and just kept moving forward with our team to make sure that we're achieving our goals, uh, to to make sure that our membership is benefiting and our association is moving further. You raise a great point there in talking about blocking out the noise. You know, as women, sometimes our biggest critics are ourselves. Um, We certainly may also have external critics, but sometimes the noise in our own head can make us doubt ourselves, our skills. Um, You know, I talked a little bit about advocating for yourself, but what are some of the strategies you use to stay positive or maybe to overcome that internal narrative. You're human. You're going to have moments where you question yourself or other things. How do you overcome that challenge? Yeah, no, no, you're right, Rachel. Look, even now, after being in uh, in the industry for 23 years, uh, I still doubt myself, right, that, hey, am I going to be able to do this? Because in, while you're growing in your career, you will always have obstacles and you will always have challenges. But, but, and you could have a bad days. I have a bad days, uh, one or two bad days. But but getting yourself out of that is important, right? Because when when things are tough, when there's obstacles around you, it can be really dark uh, around you, right? So having the uh, the the positive support, positive people. It's something that has helped me throughout my journey. I really stay away from negativity. Um, I stay away from gossip. I stay away from people who are negative about other people. Um, And if that means that I break certain relationship, I'm okay with that. And I've made those decisions to break away from people who are negative because there's nothing positive that comes for me, people around me, or even for themselves. So I just stay away from that. So being being positive is important, but having people around you who are positive, who are uplifting you, um, is is it is so important because I, I can tell you that even now, um, uh, day to day, there are struggles, but I just, you know, you say you, you have to move forward. And it's not that easy, but like I said, having the positive team around you uh, helps you dramatically. And that's what I've done, and I continue to do so. And I know I will always rely on... Um, my, uh, uh, you know, people who are positive around me. And and I'm very fortunate that I, I have that team around me. Well, I can tell you firsthand that when I am clouded in my own headspace or my own negativity, you would be one of my first phone calls and I know um, vice versa. But I, I love that idea of having that team around you be a support, not just in the day to day, but also in reminding us, you know, we want those voices to be louder than the negative voices. So the people who support us and making sure you you made a good point that it's hard to make a decision sometimes to not have somebody in your life who doesn't serve you best as far as positivity. So I love that. Um, you know, that brings me to one of my favorite questions. And, you know, I've, I've served on panels with you and certainly um, prepped you for many is what advice we would give our younger selves. I think that reflection and growth as people is really important for each of us. And looking back on our own journeys, what did we learn? Where did we have missteps? What did we learn from that? But as you look back to, let's say, 21-year-old Jagruti starting out in financial services, meeting a prospect and ending up as a hotelier, maybe unexpectedly, what would you tell that young woman today um, before those two journeys really started for you? So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give up. Um, and it's not the, the advice. It's actually my, my experiences. Look, sometimes um, we think that uh, the decisions that are in front of us have to be made uh, very quickly. Otherwise, as a female, we look like we're indecisive. Uh, but And I felt that. I felt that a lot in earlier in my journey in both industry that if I'm not making the quick decision, if I'm not giving my answers, then they're going to think that I'm not capable or I'm not. But over the years, I realized that, you know, instead of putting yourself being indecisive, taking your time and making sure that you're doing your due diligence in every area and making the decision. And I'm not saying that waiting two months, but instead of two hours, if it takes you a day to make a decision, I think it's worth it. So I would tell anybody who's coming into industry or who's starting in any industries that, look, you will have a pressure of making quick decisions. But but know that if the decisions are affecting not just you, but people around you, your community, 
it's really important to 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 take your time and making you making it doing your due diligence to make the decision. The second thing I will say is taking a risk. I think it's um, it's important um, and taking a calculated risk. When I was 22 years old, when I decided to buy that first property without having any money, I realized the the gamble or the risk that I was taking. But I did my due diligence. I did the market study. I I made sure that the 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 money that I was borrowing, um, uh, you know, almost made a business plan for five years, exactly what I was going to do with it, how I was going to be successful. And and I think that's that's important. But taking a risk is important as well, um, because if you don't take this kind of risk, then it's uh, and I will not say that it's tough to get ahead, but I think it's just bec- little, becomes a little bit more challenging. So I, I would also say that take risk, but make sure that you're doing your due diligence uh, 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 to make sure that you're taking a calculated risk. At the end, look, we all make mistakes. I continue to make mistakes even now after so many years uh, being experienced. Uh, but I think we have to learn from our mistakes. And that's the biggest thing, right? You have you make a mistake, you learn from it, and you move on. Um, if you keep dwelling on it, and if you keep getting upset about it, I wish I didn't do this five years ago, I wish I didn't 10 years ago, I think that puts more negative on you. So I believe in moving on with your life. Once you know the mistake has been made, let's improve it, let's correct it, let's make sure it doesn't happen again. Let's put the process in place, have our protocols in place for yourself and team around you. Um, and I think that's, uh, I think that those are the, the the best advice I can give from my own experience. I love that. Um, well, we are um, getting real close on time. I want to think about the DEI advisor's motto, which is empowering personal success. You know, um, you can look to mentors, you can look to company policies and other things. But at the end of the day, we really have an enormous role to play in our own personal success. So what is one more nugget or tidbit you would leave our audience with as your final piece of advice? I think um, um and I can say it as, as a female, and I know we've heard this many times uh, with many speakers that look support each other, but, but I, I would say it again today, and I'll say this over and over, I think it's extremely important, not just because you're a female or you're a male, but support each other, right? What, what, if you support each other, it, it can only accelerate you personally and professionally. And I, and I really truly believe that. Um, um, I, I also think, uh, um, getting engaged, uh, being involved um, with whatever industry that you're passionate about, make sure you get engaged, right? Because once you're out there, you're meeting people, talking to people. I know social media is a, is a huge thing, which we can all take advantage of. But that personal connection comes from meeting people, shaking their hands, giving them a hug, um, of course, with the COVID protocols. But <laughs> I, I, think it's, I, I think it's important. And look, we, we've all been through a very rough few years uh, in many ways. Uh, our kids have been through, our families have been through, our teammates have been through so much. And I feel that now I think it's a chance for us to get together and um, and, and not just give back, but but support each other in, in every way. I, I think uh, helping each other is a is a best way. Um, you can actually help yourself. So that's really the the one of the advice that I would uh, I would close out with. Well, I think that's actually perfect because you, again, speak with what you believe in. You have been a tremendous um, supporter for me, for my career, for those around me as well. I am grateful for your friendship, your hospitality industry leadership. I had a million other things I wanted to ask you about, but we're going to run out of time. So we're going to have to do Jagruti 2.0 at some point moving forward. But thank you for your continued leadership. Thank you for the inspiration and the guidance and all that you do for on the industry that we both love so much, but really appreciate your time today. Rachel, same thing to you and thank you for your friendship and uh, and thank you for the opportunity. And, um, uh, you know, again, having you with me uh, over the years, learning from you um, has, uh, has made a tremendous uh, impact in my personal and professional journey. And this is something I'm forever grateful for. So thank you so much, Rachel. To you Absolutely. As well. And that's what makes my getting to sit down with you today extra special. So thank you again. And we will continue to watch and learn from you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you.